Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault and today I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is going to be on a pretty darn space age looking carbine. This is the CX-4 Storm chambered in 9mm by Beretta. And so I guess this is their 9mm carbine partner to the PX-4 Storm series. And it's quite an interesting looking firearm. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of close-ups here. We'll start here with the butt stock in the back, obviously using this little thumb hole stock here, which I'll talk about in a second. This is a direct blowback operated firearm, like many of the pistol caliber carbines are. And I got this thing to the range, and I should say this thing is on loan to the channel from my good friend Jack. This is the last in this current series of guns that he's let me borrow and try out. And this is one that I was anticipating a lot. You guys know that I like sub guns and pistol caliber carbines in general. In fact, they're kind of my favorite type of gun or genre of gun. I love SBRs. I would love to own a submachine gun one day, a, a, a civilian transferable submachine gun. That'd be a lot of fun. So this kind of fits that bill of intriguing me a lot. And I gotta say, before I got this thing to the range, I definitely noticed there were some issues. And the first thing is gonna be, is this stock. I am not a fan of thumb hole stocks in general. Now, the reason that this gun has a thumb hole stock is for importation reasons. It can't have a pistol grip in a carbine or rifle setup. So they went with this thumb hole stock, which I guess makes it more sporting or gives it more sporting purposes, I guess. And this is something that I really think needs to be addressed because this thumb hole stock makes some of the ergonomics very unenjoyable and unusable. And one of those is the magazine release. Now I noticed this, as I said, before I went to the range. Now because this uses Beretta 92 magazines, which in some places I know people always ask, does it take Glock mags? Well, in this case it's a Beretta product, so it's not gonna take Glock mags, it's gonna take Beretta mags. But does it take a pistol mag? And a lot of times people look at that as a positive thing. I actually look at it as a negative thing. A lot of times the pistol caliber carbines and the submachine guns will use a double feed magazine. It's more reliable and you can actually get more rounds in there and they don't have to be bent. Because this is a magazine that was originally designed for a pistol, it has a little bit of a slant to it when if you ever look at some of the, let's say B&T APC9 magazines, they're straight. And ergonomically, I think those work a lot better, especially when the action and the magazine is away from the pistol grip. But they've incorporated the Beretta 92 two mags into this gun and because of that you have the magazine release in the typical place that you would for a pistol and that's where this stock is horrific. I cannot get my thumb around because I can't bend my arm to the other side. I can't reach this magazine release. I'm trying to right now. I can I can't get it. So the only way for me to release this magazine I discovered was with my left hand. So I have to take my non-shooting hand off of the gun and take the magazine out that way. Now, is this something that I could get over with practice? Yeah, I just think that there's a more ergonomic way of doing this. And I know that this is an artifact of the design that we're using a pistol magazine. So I'm used to, in my pistol caliber carbines, of having a magazine up here closer to the action and having a separate pistol grip. So what can Beretta do about this? Can they put on a pistol grip stock? Well, because it's imported this way, they can't. I personally think that Beretta needs to either make these in the United States where they can have different stock options because you don't really have much modularity with this and a definitely a pistol grip lower or they need to be brought into the country as pistols. So no stock and have some type of attachment point to add a stock if people want to SBR it and have a normal pistol grip. That would make this gun so much more ergonomic and enjoyable to shoot. When it comes to the other manual of arms, something that was really well thought out is the bolt release, which is right here. Uh, that's really nice. You don't have one where you have to take your non-shooting hand off and maneuver it somewhere in the gun, but once the bolt is back to close the bolt, all you have to do is lower this level. And that works very, very well. Something else ergonomically that I do like is a lot of times in these blowback action guns, the springs have to be very, very stout. This is not bad at all. So to charge this gun or to cock this gun doesn't take a lot of pressure and energy at all. So however it's designed uh, to mitigate that and not need those more powerful springs, 
I like that as well. So this thing has a, a few things that I like and a few things that I don't like. So I know I've talked a lot here and these were just my initial impressions before I got to the range. So let's go ahead and set up the target at 15 yards and I'm gonna show you guys my first rounds. Okay, so the first thing I gotta say is the gun is exceptionally accurate. I was very impressed with that, but I have a couple of issues. I was very surprised by the fact that the recoil impulse is kind of odd. It's not that it's heavy, it was just a lot more than what I was expecting. Now, it didn't hurt or cause any issues that way, but of course, direct blowback's always gonna have a little bit more of a thud. It was just odd. It was just heavier and pushier than what I was expecting and what I have in other pistol caliber carbines that I have shot. Now, the biggest issue that I had after putting the first rounds down range, and I'm sure you noticed this in the very beginning, is it took me a second to actually be able to get my eyes adjusted to these sights because the cheek weld here is very high and the sights are so low. Now I was running pretty minimalistic earmuffs there and they were rubbing on the side of the gun and actually was breaking the seal. So I was trying to adjust them and figure out how can I maneuver my head in such a way that I can get down and see the sights. Now the only way that I can really do this is if I take the stock off of my shoulder and bring it way up. And that of course ruins the whole concept of what the stock is supposed to be. It's to allow you to shoot the gun from the shoulder. So the way that this stock is designed, it is definitely not for me. This is too high and maybe there's adjustments out there. I don't know much about these guns. I've never owned one or shot one before. So for all that I know, there are pieces that can be adjusted or taken off. I don't really see anything here, but people that own these guns might be able to shed a little bit of light in the comment section below. But I don't really see a ton of modularity on this. So this was actually really difficult for me to get my head down and be able to see those sights. And I'm gonna roll in a little bit of footage here of just me trying to figure it out. So as you can see, I was having a little bit of trouble there. Maybe it's the fact that I got this gigantic head. I don't know, but it was not really easy for me to get my head down on those sights, as I mentioned. So maybe if I was running just earplugs, that'd be one thing, but I like to run earmuffs. I like to use as much protection at the range as possible when it comes to my hearing. As you guys know, I am a musician. Something else that I'm a big fan of that I don't see a way of adding to this rifle, and that is a vertical foregrip. Now I know some people like to make fun of me, especially Andrew from Australia, but but this rifle or carbine does not allow any rail attachments on the sides or underneath. As I said, maybe there's some stuff in aftermarket. I personally haven't seen it, but if somebody else can tell me in the comment section below, that would be some great information to have. But as it comes, there's no M-locks, Picatinny rails, key mod, nothing. So you have to hold it in the traditional way. Not that that's bad, but for a gun like this, I'd like to see a little bit more modularity, especially for being able to add attachments such as lights or lasers. I know a lot of people like to get really tacky cool with 
with that. You do have a piece of Picatinny rail here on the top, of course, for optics. And that would come in really handy because while these iron sights for me are just too low, if I put on a red dot with a higher mount, that would probably fix that issue. But I'm a guy that thinks you should be able to shoot a gun with irons, especially when they're built into the receiver like this. These things are kind of massive. These little wings on the side, they're pretty big. So they're gonna be noticeable. Now, if this was just a complete flat top upper, I wouldn't care as much, but the fact that I gotta deal with these and then get a red dot above that, not a big fan of that. But those might be small gripes and just things that I have to deal with because of my personal body shape. All right, so let's put some more rounds down range at 15 yards, and this time I'm going to be going for the head to see if I can keep up that good accuracy. For a gun that I feel has many ergonomic issues, I gotta say this thing is pretty darn accurate and I need to give credit where credit is due. But they don't really give you a lot of options of modifying to help fit your body. But speaking of modifications, there's a couple of things on this firearm that Jack, the owner of it, has changed out that I should mention because I know people are gonna ask me about it. And the first thing Jack added was a three lug adapter for a silencer. This one's made by Silencer Co. And it is my understanding that this was a factory threaded barrel, but some people are saying that they don't come with factory threaded barrels. I don't know. Uh, so maybe Jack can comment in the comment section below and let everybody know if he had this barrel threaded or if it came this way from the factory. The other thing he added was an enlarged charging handle on the side. And as far as I can tell, nothing else has been modified in any other way. But I know people were going to ask me about this. So now I'm gonna let my wife shoot this and see what she thinks. She loves these pistol caliber carbines just as much as I do. But I'll go ahead and tell you ahead of time, she is left eye dominant. And so when it came to shooting this gun, she had an even worse experience than I did. Not only were these sights very low, and the stock rubbed up against her earmuffs, she couldn't get her head over far enough to use her left eye. So she had to use her non-dominant eye. She still did really well, but she was not interested in putting more than one magazine through this gun. So let's take a look at that footage now. And as you can see, she was very accurate with this firearm too, but she did not enjoy shooting it. I remember asking her, do you want to shoot another magazine? And she said, absolutely not. I don't like the way that it feels. So to me, that's an important aspect of, about a firearm. Even if it is super reliable and very high quality, if it's not fun to shoot, it's not a good gun. Well, maybe not a good gun for you, but my wife is a smaller statured woman. I'm a little bit bigger, I got a big head, she has a small head, I'm right eye dominant, she's left eye dominant. We're both right-handed, but both of us had the same issues with this firearm. So we're on two ends of the spectrum when it comes to our body shapes and sizes, and we both had issues. So I'm curious if other people that own this firearm or have shot this firearm also feel the same way. So for the last shooting footage, I'm gonna show you guys me shooting it at 25 yards, which is the furthest back I can put the target at this range to see how the accuracy is at a little bit further distance.
So as you can see, the gun was pretty accurate at 25 yards, even considering my mediocre marksmanship. The one thing that I did notice at the further distance was the recoil impulse pushes the gun a little bit to the right after each shot, and it took me a little bit longer than what I would want to get it back on target. Many times with these direct blowback guns, that recoil impulse comes directly back into my shoulder. Maybe it has to do with the balance internally of the firearm. I just kept feeling the gun wanting to move to the right after each shot, and I just had to adjust for it, but I'm not used to that in a pistol caliber carbine. So what are my final thoughts on this gun? I gotta say, I went into this review expecting to absolutely love this. I go into every range report with a little bit of bias. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. I always try to give each gun a fair shot and give you guys my honest experiences. And because I love Beretta, and I've really come to like the PX4 Storms, and I want one in 9mm, as I've mentioned, I kinda thought, this is gonna be a pistol caliber carbine I really want. I love these types of guns. I was expecting to come out of this thing with probably a four and a half star review. But after shooting it, I'm really disappointed to be very honest with you. I think I've covered most of my complaints in all the segments I've already talked about. My main issue is the ergonomics. I have nothing negative to say about the performance of this gun. It had no malfunctions, no failures to feed, no failures to eject. It's just a very accurate firearm but it's no fun to shoot. Recoil impulse is a little bit too heavy and the ergonomics of this gun just don't work for me. And my biggest gripe with all of them is that magazine release. I don't like the fact I have to come down here and that's not even ergonomic. If the button was bigger or placed differently, it might be better if I had to move my hand like that. But the fact that it's a very shallow button, very close to the receiver, it's not that easy for me to get these magazines out. Plus, the magazines really don't drop free all that much. There's a lot of friction inside of that mag well. I believe it will, but it just doesn't pop out like, like I would want. So, the magazine ergonomics, just not my thing. And I kind of wish it used a different type of magazine. And as I mentioned, I know a lot of people are gonna say, does it take Glock mags or take Beretta mags? That doesn't mean the gun is good. The only reason I think people want that is because a lot of people have Beretta 92 mags or Glock mags lying around. But I actually find that a proprietary magazine or a magazine that's designed specifically for the gun often works a little bit better. What they're taking is a magazine designed for a pistol and trying to incorporate it into a carbine. Do they make it work? Yes, they do. But I don't think it's the best design for this type of firearm. But I really would like to see Beretta come at this again with a different philosophy. If they could make this in the United States instead of Italy, they wouldn't have to worry about things like the stock. They could have a real pistol grip and have more modularity in this design. I believe the mechanics of this gun are sound, but the external design, it just doesn't work for me. And if it doesn't work for my wife either, I have a feeling it's not gonna work for a lot of people. So that's just my personal opinion, and I know that if you own one of these, and if I've said these negative things, you might wanna go thumbs down the video. But remember, I'm just a guy on the internet, and I'm just sharing with you my personal experiences. I think this is a very high quality gun, and I don't blame you if you bought one and you like it. But this is just range reports based on my personal preference. I'm just a guy in his garage making videos about guns that he gets to shoot. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. Don't get too upset. I know lately a lot of gun owners on many of my range reports take offense to things that I say. I'm not besmirching you or the firearms that you love to shoot, may own, or collect. This is just my personal opinions. So there you go. So how does this gun rank on my little star system? Well, this was gonna get a pretty low rating, mainly because I said of the ergonomics. It was not fun to shoot. I'm only gonna give this gun two and a half stars out of five. I really wanna give it two out of five, but that might be a little bit too low. The reason I'm gonna bump up to two and a half stars out of five is because functionally the gun is fantastic and the gun is exceptionally accurate for me. But it's just no fun to shoot. The lack of modularity, it just does not fit my body. So there you go, two and a half stars out of five for the Beretta CX4 Storm chambered in nine millimeter. The gun, I think, has a lot of potential and maybe if there's a huge aftermarket for it to change out the grips and the stocks and the handguard, it might be a gun worth looking at. But right now, I don't see that. 
but I could be wrong and maybe people in the comment section below will tell me how wrong I am. But as the gun sits, which is how I reviewed it, only two and a half stars out of five. And it's a gun that I'm probably gonna pass on even though I went into this review saying, I'm probably gonna buy one. So there you go. My thoughts and opinions and my range report. Beretta CX-4 Storm. You guys own one of these? Do you agree or disagree with my opinions? I'd love to know. So let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions. And as always, thanks for watching.